In alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam Allah wa rasulullah. We've been focusing in on uh, speaking about the principles of Islam. It all begins and ends with your belief in Allah. And again, all of us say as Muslims that we believe in Allah. But the reality is that most of us really do not believe in Allah. We say it with our tongues. But the actions we make in life show otherwise. For example, seeking blessings through someone or something other than Allah. Or sacrificing for something other than Allah. These are two things that will invalidate your belief in Him. And we have to be careful of this as Muslims because so many of us do this every day. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning. Have you considered the two idols that the pagan Arabs used to worship? And also a third idol that they used to worship? Now, in this verse, Allah is speaking about three men who used to live years ago, centuries ago. They were three righteous men. They believed in the law. But then when they died, the people missed them. So the people began to build statues to commemorate, <clears throat> to remember them with. And afterwards, the people would go and talk to the statues as if they were talking to these three wise men. And then they began to worship them. That's how idol worship, you know, begins. This is why in, in Islam, we don't draw pictures of, of anything with a soul. And this is why we don't have statues and pictures of people on display in our homes and stuff. Because it can easily lead to worship. So we have to be careful of this, guys. It is so easy for us as human beings to fall into the trap of worshiping other than Allah due to sadness or missing someone or something like that. Then there's a hadith. You know, this next hadith is the hadith where the prophet is explaining, you know, what happens here. You know, people die and then they allow their personal jinns to come to them and say, don't you miss that person why don't you uh, make a picture of that person or a statue of that person and go and talk to him every day and next thing you know you're worshiping him. So we have to be careful of this. We need to understand as Muslims that everything that we do, it all boils down to our purpose in life. We were created to worship Allah. And we were put here on this earth to be tested in our belief in him. Every day is a trial for us. There's going to be complications, hardships, trials that you're going to face every day of your life. How you handle yourself in those situations determines whether or not you truly believe in Allah. And Allah tells us to say in the Quran that my prayer my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for you, Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And you have no partner. Of this I have been commanded, and I am of the Muslims. This is a supplication that we need to recite on a regular basis, that we need to ponder the meaning of on a regular basis. Everything we do, our prayers, our sacrifices, our life, our death, everything is for Allah. He has no partners, and we hope to be amongst those who believe in Him. So this is why Allah tells us in the interpretation, the meaning, turn in prayer to your Lord and sacrifice only to Him. So again, everything is for Allah. A lot of people ask me, why is it, Sister Layla, 
that as Muslims we don't celebrate our birthdays like the non-Muslims do with presents and gifts and all of that. Well, this is a form of worship. You were created by a law. He was the one that chose for you to be born. He was the one that decided that you would grow from a drop of sperm into the human being you are. You had nothing to do with that. And to have people commemorate you every year by bringing you presents. Who are you? You're no different than any other human being. You're not a law. What did you do to be worthy, to deserve gifts every year because you're living on this earth? Again, my life and my death are for a law, the Lord of the worlds. So this is why we don't celebrate our birthdays that way. We celebrate our birthdays as Muslims by giving in charity. We spend our time alone in the home thanking Allah for letting us live another year. Thanking Allah for giving us another year to earn his mercy. We spend our time on our birthdays pondering our fate, pondering where we are in life, hoping that we can become better. We don't spend our time partying because we are on earth and born and expecting people to give us presents. Again, my life, my death are for a law. Okay. There's a hadith. <coughs> Whereas Ali said, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told him about four judgments of Allah. He said the first is Allah's curse is on the person who kills and sacrifices to anything other than him. I want you guys to ponder that. You may say I don't sacrifice to nothing other than Allah. Oh really? What is the point of your akika? If I were to ask the average Muslim on the street, why do we welcome our children with an akika? Why do we sacrifice a, a lamb or a goat when we have a child born? Do you know the average Muslim would tell me that the reason we do it is because the child we do it for the child? We're not killing or sacrificing the goat for the child. We're sacrificing the goat for Allah to thank him for blessing us with this child. So all those Muslims out there who make an akika and they sacrifice in the name of their child, they are associating partners with Allah. You've made that child <coughs> equal to Allah and maybe that's why that child grows up to be a bad Muslim. You never know. Again, Allah's curse is on anyone who sacrifices to anything other than Allah. I am sacrificing this goat to thank Allah for blessing me and my family with this child. I am not sacrificing this goat on behalf of the child. Okay? Also, Ali said that the Prophet told him that Allah's curse is on the person who curses his own parents. Believe it or not, there's a lot of Muslims out there who curse their relative, their mother and father. How do you do that? Not just by cursing them out with your tongue, but by playing the dirty dozen with other people's parents. You want to talk about my mother, knowing it's going to make me angry, so I'm going to talk about yours. Now you've cursed your mother. You've caused me to curse your mother. We don't go around playing the dirty dozens with each other, guys. Don't talk about people's family. If you're mad at a person, deal with that person. But do not bring that person's family into it. And also Ali said that the Prophet said, Allah's curse is on the one who protects and her a heretic. In other words, you support and you protect a person who innovates in our religion. There's a lot of innovators in Islam today. 
all of you Muslims out there who support those terrorist organizations like ISIS and and all of that Hamas you guys are sheltering air heretics people who have innovated in our religion people who've made a mockery of our deen and also Ali said that the prophet said Allah's curse is on the one who changes the boundary lines and <clears throat> this occurs say for example you're driving down the street you decide you want to play a prank on everyone so you're gonna take the sign that says you are going east and turn it make it say you're going west instead you are now changing the boundary you're causing people to who are traveling to become misguided and and lost this is a horrific thing a horrible thing to do whoever does that has the curse of a law on them so these are four things I want you guys to ponder and I want you to ask yourself do you commit these four actions do you sacrifice to anything other than a law do you curse your own parents do you support people who innovate in our religion do you go around confusing the people by changing the boundaries of the earth if you do that then you have the curse of a law on you so you need to stop and change there's a hadith whereas the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a man entered paradise because of a fly and another man entered the hell fire because of a fly what happened was these two men walked by some people who had an idol by which they would not allow anyone to pass without sacrificing to it so they told one man to make a sacrifice he said I have nothing to give as an offering so they told him sacrifice anything even if it's a fly so he caught a fly and gave it to their idol and they opened the way for him and let him through this man as a result will be in the hellfire and then they told the other man sacrifice something and he stood his ground he told them I will never sacrifice anything to anyone other than a law I don't care what you demand of me so they ended up killing him and even though they murdered him Allah took his soul and allowed him into paradise so the cowardly man ends up in the hellfire the noble man ended up in paradise so again guys we do not sacrifice to anything other than Allah under no circumstances so again guys we all say we believe in Allah we all say we associate no partners with him we worship him alone but I want you to get real ask yourself do you make sacrifices to your children or do you make them to Allah do you have people worshiping you because you were born or do youth spend your date of birth praising Allah counting your blessings from Allah thanking him for giving you another year of life this is something for you guys to ponder tomorrow we're going to continue by speaking about more things that can and will and does invalidate your faith again I want everyone to know that we are desperately in need of donations to keep our website going if you truly do enjoy learning the basics of this religion you know from this website please support the Dawah effort we are a nonprofit organization we are not affiliated with any mosque we are a website that consists of mostly housewives and children please donate and you can make your donation by going to www.sunafollowers.net slash donate.php 
and use PayPal. The money goes directly into our uh, non-taxable um, account. Okay, so we'll stop right here. If you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can type them on the screen.